A former La Habra police chief and five other Southern California men have been indicted on conspiracy charges in the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. That's right. KKL 9's Lori Perez is live with the very latest for us. Lori. Yeah, the former chief surrendered this morning and was arrested by the FBI. He has made headlines and a name for himself as a vocal member of the Stop the Steal and pandemic protest movements. But prosecutors say he and five other Southern California men went too far in the weeks leading up to and including January 6th. From the riot at the Capitol. Yes, he has strong views. To protesting masks and COVID rules in Orange County. You know, if he uses strong language, then, then so be it. Attorney Bilal Isaili recognizes his client, former La Habra police chief Alan Hostetter, is not one to hold back. But that doesn't make him a criminal. Hostetter, 56 of San Clemente, is one of six California men facing federal charges related to the breach at the U.S. Capitol. Along with him, Russell Taylor, 40, of Ladera Ranch, Eric Scott Warner, 45, of Menifee, Felipe Antonio Tony Martinez, 47, of Lake Elsinore, Derek Kinnison, 39, of Lake Elsinore, and Ronald Maley, 51, of Temecula, are looking at charges that include conspiracy, obstructing an official proceeding, and unlawful entry on restricted building or grounds, a case Hostetter's attorney calls politically motivated. They didn't commit any acts of violence. They had an opportunity to go in the Capitol. They didn't do that. Um, they just wanted to voice their uh, opinion that they objected to the, uh, the certification of the election as did many members of Congress also place their objections. But prosecutors say they did more than that in the weeks before January 6th. According to the indictment, the defendants allegedly planned and coordinated their effort to obstruct and interfere with the joint session of Congress. It alleges they used apps and social media to plan, using group texts to talk about travel and whether to bring firearms. One of the men sharing a photo that showed gear he was packing, including two hatchets, a stun baton, a knife, and a plate carrier vest. Isaili says they made plans to protect themselves. That's it. How do we know that that was made in, in context of protecting themselves from, from other counter protesters? Because, because they didn't hurt anybody and they had the opportunity to do that. Hostetter is not accused of entering the Capitol or carrying a weapon. He certainly had the opportunity to, to do more and there were people there who did do more. We're not here to justify what other people did inside the Capitol or on the Senate floor, but we do think a distinction should be drawn from those who forcibly entered the Capitol or committed any damage from the peaceful protesters that were outside of the Capitol protesting. But their involvement at the Capitol and four of the accused with the three percenters anti-government group is something to keep an eye on, says Brian Levin, who runs the Center for Hate and Extremism at Cal State University, San Bernardino. What it shows you is the different kind of threat on the far right with regard to extremism. Some are uh, kind of over the top and they met online and, and got coalesced with respect to the COVID restrictions, then they moved on to stop the steal, and there's this elastic reservoir of grievance. A growing discontent that could cause trouble as extreme far-right groups find themselves on the outside politically on a national scale and create local groups willing to organize and use violence. What we see is when certain extremist fringe movements find themselves outside of access that they think is possible with the mainstream, they tend to splinter and the and the, 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 the loosest cannons are the ones that fire and the ones that fire often do so on their own in smaller uh, informal associations. Now, his attorney says a, a judge released the former police chief with virtually no conditions. He will appear in a D.C. federal court on Monday via Zoom. Back to you. Lori, thank you.